This is a story about a kid named Zach. Now, I didn't know too much about Zach, except that it was his first year at the school, and it was mine too. He had a twin sister in the other fourth grade class with big, serious eyes that matched his perfectly. And he absolutely hated my class. How did I know he hated my class? Well, he'd trudge on in, roll his eyes, sit upside down in his chair, and never, ever sing. Now, I was about ready to wave the white flag on this kid. I had tried everything I could possibly think of to motivate him, and it seemed like none of it was going to work. He was just going to stay disrespectful, unresponsive, and unmotivated. That is, until I read out the list of characters for our Christmas musical. Mr. Herod, mean, snarky, department store owner, loves money, hates Christmas, does not have to sing. <laughs> oh, Zach's eyes, they glistened with interest, and later on he ran past me and hollered, Miss Francisco, I think I'm going to audition for the part of Mr. Herod. I was surprised. Oh, okay, sure, I said this was the first time he had showed any interest in my class. Audition day finally came, and it was Zach's turn. He nailed it. He was the perfect Mr. Herod, so naturally I gave him the part. And the looks on those teachers' faces when I told them was priceless. Are you sure, they said, are you sure you want to give him this lead role? You know how he is. You know how disrespectful, unresponsive, unmotivated he can be. Are you sure you want to give Zach this lead part? But I saw something in him, and I was willing to take the gamble. Yeah, I nodded. I think he can do it. And he did. He practiced at home with his mom. He rehearsed at recess with his classmates. And in my class, he memorized his lines, sitting upright in his chair. The first year teacher in me was stoked. I was ecstatic. I was seeing a side of Zach I had never seen before. He was working hard, having a blast with his classmates. Finally, he seemed motivated. The day of the performance, all of the third and fourth graders crammed onto stage for dress rehearsal. Scene one, Zach came out, did great. Scene two, Zach came out, his hand got stuck in his coat pocket as he reached for Mr. Herod's cell phone, and he fumbled his lines. Immediately, his face fell, his shoulders dropped. Everyone was calling out for him to get your act together, the show must go on, but each scene was harder and harder until finally, Zach was totally out of character, entering late for his lines and sitting upside down in his chair. My heart dropped. I had gambled all of my time and my faith and my hope into this kid. And what does he do? He just crushes it the day of the performance. After rehearsal, I pulled him aside. Zach, what happened? What happened to all your hard work? All the time you put in practicing, did you get nervous? No. I messed up, and it made me sad. Well then, what were you thinking when you just zoned out on us like that? I wanted answers. I can't, he mumbled. I'm sorry, Zach. I, I didn't hear what you said. Can you say that one more time, please? This time he looked up. I can't. Now, a mentor of mine once told me that all of our emotions and all of our actions are traced back to our thoughts. Zach's thought was, I can't. It was this thought that led him to be unmotivated, unresponsive, and fear risk. Essentially, Zach's thought process was, I can't do it, so why should I even try to begin with? And well, that's what caused all the trouble. I love Henry Ford's quote, which so aptly states, whether you think you can or think you can't, 
you're right. So sitting there with Zach, I realized he needed help. He needed help to turn his I can't into an I can. And so I took a deep breath, said a quick prayer, and dove into the biggest pep talk of Zach's 10 years of life. You can do it. Don't give up on yourself. You've worked so hard. You've accomplished so much. I believe in you. Your classmates believe in you. You can do it. When you step onto that stage, you are Mr. Herod. Don't give up. We believe in you. We rehearsed for the rest of the afternoon, and this time I saw a little spark of confidence that I hadn't seen before. I crossed my fingers, wishing hard that it would remain for the night's performance. That evening, Zach amazed everyone. He was Mr. Herod. He stomped around on the stage like he owned the place. He delivered his lines with hilarious comedic timing. And during the finale, Zach sang. He sang loud and proud of his classmates, hand motions included. My heart was bursting at the seams. But at the same time, I was flabbergasted. What in the world happened that caused such a drastic change in Zach? I wrestled with this question over Christmas break until I finally came to an answer. Zach had an I can experience. An I can experience is a series of events through which a student can learn to believe in the possibilities within himself or herself. Now this experience, it's not a coincidence, but it's a combination of three key factors. A dedicated mentor who believes in the student and can imagine the possible, a unique opportunity for growth, and a combination of support, encouragement, and high expectations. Here's how these key factors created Zach's I Can Experience. Zach had mentors whom against all odds believed in his ability to grow. We knew that there was something in him, there was a potential, and we could imagine that possibility for him. And because of it, we refused to kind of just sit back and let him continue thinking that he couldn't. These mentors he could found not only in me and other adults, but within his classmates, who rehearsed with him during recess, prayed for his success, and cheered on his hard work. Now, my feelings and warm, fuzzy beliefs alone were not enough to create this experience. As hard as I thought, I couldn't just, boop, you're fixed, yay, good for you, and send him on his way. I had to actually act on my beliefs. I had to give him an opportunity to bring to life the possibility which I imagined. So I gave him a unique opportunity which was built upon his interests and his strengths, but one that challenged him immensely. This opportunity required hard work. And this goal of this opportunity was not just success on stage, but ultimately of growth and of learning. Now that he had this opportunity, I couldn't just let him flounder around until he figured out what to do. He needed support. So I supported Zach by making sure that he had clear guidelines and step-by-step instructions. I modeled how to memorize his lines and how to deliver them. And I used some scaffolding strategies, such as talking through the storyline or having him think about the way that his character was feeling so he'd better understand his character and the musical. Of course, being the main character for your class musical is no easy feat. And this is where encouragement was key. Yes, there's been some debate over the type of encouragement best suited for children, for students. But for an I can experience, the type of encouragement you'd need is encouragement that is specific, intentional, and genuine. It doesn't applaud the talent, but instead applauds the hard work. It doesn't give trophies to skill, but instead to effort. It keeps the student focused on the goal at hand and not on his or her ego. For example, if Zach did really well at rehearsal, I could have very easily said, wow, you're so talented, high five, go away now. 
Instead, I'd sit down and tell him, dude, thank you so much for staying focused all of rehearsal. And I love how much character you put into your lines. I couldn't stop laughing. Keep it up. This way, I was able to encourage Zach, while at the same time keeping him goal-oriented and making sure that he felt like his hard work was really paying off. Finally, with support and encouragement backing me up, I was able to set high expectations for him. Expectations that he, as a student who feared risk, wouldn't have set for himself. His classmates saw potential in him as well, and they set high expectations for him too, keeping him on task, letting him not slack off, and we pushed him to strive for more than he would have strived for alone. This I can experience isn't unique to Zach's story. It's actually one that we can find within our own life narratives. Just take a couple seconds, close your eyes, and kind of think through life moments and find for yourself where those I can experiences are. When I take these three key factors into consideration, I realize many of my moments of just immense growth and learning have actually been I can experiences. For example, riding a bike, learning to ride a bike. My first month of teaching, getting to the top of that rock climbing problem that I keep falling off of, and teaching Zach. This and many more, these and many more experiences are my I can experiences. And the beauty of these experiences is not that, not only have they helped me grow as a person, but when I am faced with difficulty in my life, I can look back and say to myself, I could then, I can now. This is why I can experiences are important for students, for children, for everyone. Anyone who is a mentor and has somebody that looks up to them, we can create these I can experiences. I've noticed that as a teacher, students, not all of them easily believe in themselves. And because they don't believe in themselves, they won't risk for learning, for success, for achieving anything, really. Something kind of gets lost as children grow. They forget how to imagine the limitless possibilities within themselves. It's something that needs to be taught, learned, and experienced. As teachers, we must first and foremost believe in our students, and then teach our students to believe in themselves. Everything else will follow. So, this is a story about a kid named Zach. Now, I know a little bit more about Zach. I know that he's a complete goofball, but he's respectful, he's responsive, and he is motivated. I also know that he doesn't hate my class. He actually kind of likes it. And I know that right now he thinks he can't sing, but we're working on it. Because I think he can. And soon, he will too. Thank you.